In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how I made my homemade cornhole boards extremely slick. In my opinion, playing on slick cornhole boards just makes the game so much more fun because you know you may land a bag right here and then you know your next turn, if you throw your bag low and at a high rate of speed, you can actually knock your previously thrown bag into the hole by having it slide into one another. And adversely, if you know you have an opponent's bag on the edge of the board, if you throw your bag just right and you know have it land over here and have it slide, you can actually knock your opponent's bags off the board. If you're playing on a board that is not slick, you, you really don't have the ability to slide bags and knock other people on or knock yourself in. So playing on a slick board, in my opinion, just makes the game so much more fun. All right, so a little bit about my boards. My boards are made out of half inch plywood and I did a stain and I think it came out pretty darn well. After you finish staining, you need to apply the polyurethane. I use acrylic polyurethane. You can use an oil-based polyurethane, but with acrylic polyurethane, it won't bleed any of the lines. If you use an oil-based polyurethane, from what I've read online, some of the lines may bleed and it may turn a little bit yellow, so just keep that in mind. But when you apply the polyurethane, you do however many coats, and before you do your last coat of polyurethane, you wanna go over the board with, I wanna say 500 or 600 grit sandpaper, and you're just knocking out some of the impurities you know, in your previous coats, and then you apply your top coat, and you're in pretty good shape. Something else that's important to note upon, if you plan to make your board slick the same way that I'm doing, you wanna make sure that you have at least five coats of polyurethane. I ended up doing about 10. If I had the option to do it again, I'd do 15, but I ran out of poly. So the more coats, the better in my opinion. Additionally, when selecting what polyurethane gloss to go with, I'd recommend semi-gloss. I would not recommend full gloss because if you're playing this game in the sunlight, when you can see a little bit of glare right there from the semi-gloss, but if you use full gloss then, the sun's hitting this the wrong way. It may be hard to see the boards. It won't make it as much fun. So again, in order to do the finishing process that I'm going to explain right now, at least five coats of polyurethane. All right, so let's get into how I made my boards extremely smooth. First step is I used wet sandpaper. I started out with a 1500 grit wet sandpaper. And first, let, let me say, this is gonna take a lot of elbow grease. You know, you could spend as much time or as little time on this as, as you'd like. It all depends on your preference of how slick you want your board. So, Again, I started out with a 1500 grit wet sandpaper, which it's really simple. You just get your boards wet and you take your 1500 grit, do small circles and just go over the whole board. And then after you finish with the 1500 grit, then I moved on to a 2000 grit wet sandpaper. And the 2000 grit is a little bit more fine than the 1500 grit and that'll just work at removing some of the fine scratches from the 1500 grit. Why do we start off with sandpaper? Well, when you do your final coat of polyurethane, it's pretty much impossible to get that coat perfect. There will be little bits of dust and debris that will get into your top coat of polyurethane. So by using 1500 grit and then 2000 grit sandpaper, we remove a lot of those impurities and high spots. You will notice that after you use the wet sandpaper, it will haze up the board a little bit. It will look a little bit dull. Don't worry, we will get all those scratch and haze marks out as we go through this process. So we do the 1500 grit, one time throughout the board, then the 2000 grit, wet sandpaper throughout the board. Then you wanna clean off the board, make sure you get off all that dust. So after you finish with your wet sanding and after you wipe down the board, now we're gonna move on to shining and polishing these boards. And this is gonna be a three-step process. In this video, I'm gonna recommend Meguiar's products. I've been using them for the past two years and I found that they work extremely well. I've been detailing my truck since I was 16 years old and over the years I've kind of moved to Meguiar's. I'm not paid or sponsored by the company. I, I just think this system really works. So what you're gonna need, you're gonna need Meguiar's 205, 105, and then some type of wax. You can use whatever kind of wax you want. So after we finish with the wet sanding, first thing you're gonna wanna do is apply a rubbing compound. In our case, this is gonna be Meguiar's 105 Ultra Cut Compound. I'm sure you could use um, 3M rubbing compound and it'd probably work just as well, but I've used the Meguiar's 105 and it works really well for me. So what you do, you shake this stuff up, squirt it all throughout the board. A pro tip, don't be afraid to go a little heavy with the 105. You know, Make sure you got a, a decent coat on here because commonly what I've found happens is I don't put much on here and it dries out really quick and then my buffer is kind of struggling and you're, you're not really polishing as much anymore. So 
again, don't be afraid to go a little heavy on the 105. So I ended up doing a coat of 105. I buffed it on there. You can buff it by hand, but I really recommend some type of buffer. So I did one coat of the 105 and then I did a second coat of the 105. And what that did, that took out a lot of the fine scratches and swirl marks left from the 2000 grit sandpaper. So after you finish with the 105, then of course we're gonna refine that down a bit further. Then we're gonna move on to the 205. The Meguiar's 205 is an ultra finish polish. So this is really just starting to really polish this board and you really start to see this thing pop. After I finished the single coat of the 205, then I applied a coat of wax and the wax just polishes the board a little bit finer and additionally it leaves a very thin film of wax, protective wax, protective coating for the board and you know you could apply wax however often as you like you know whenever you wax your truck you know or car probably a good time to wax the cornhole boards so, so that is how I got my cornhole boards extremely slick now one other thing I'd like to note upon when selecting cornhole bags I actually made these cornhole bags myself and they are traditional cornhole bags meaning that they are made with real corn I'd recommend using bags with real corn reason being is when you're throwing these bags, the corn rubs into each other and it produces a very fine dust. So when these bags land on the board, especially on hot summer days, you will notice, I don't know if you can see it right here, but there's some dust that comes out of these bags. And in my opinion, when the dust gets on the board, it just helps these bags slide a little bit more. I could really relate this dust to the beads and shuffleboard. So if you're playing shuffleboard, you know, you throw the pucks down the board. If you don't have those beads on the board that make the pucks you know really roll and slide if you don't have those on the board then you know you throw the puck and it's gonna get bound up it's gonna stop relatively soon so it's kind of the same idea with the dust in which it really lubricates the board and it just helps the bag slide more so if you're buying bags or making bags go with traditional corn filled bags don't go with the synthetic plastic bags Sure, they may be better for water resistant. You know, if you think you're gonna leave your bags outside, okay, maybe go with them. But if you're responsible with your bags, you know, get the traditional corn filled bags. Anyway, I think I've done enough talking here. Hopefully you learned a few things from this video. But again, you know, it's just a matter of sanding and then polishing and refining the polish and taking all those scratch marks out. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of elbow grease, but I think the end product really speaks for itself. Thanks for watching. If you are curious where you can find any of the products you've seen in today's video, I will link them in the description below and I will catch you on the next one.